I'm Morten Gans Pedersen, and you're watching Rovers Chat. Hello, and welcome back to the Rovers Chat YouTube channel. We're sitting down for a bit of a squad update video as we look at the transfers so far and look at what Rovers need to do in the rest of the window. As you'll see, we've got a four man panel today. We'll start off with Mike. How are we doing, Mike? Are we good? Yeah, it's all good. It's uh, been an exciting summer so far. I hope it continues. Yeah, it's nice to be talking about signings at this stage, isn't it? I'm sure we'll get into the three that we've made. And we're joined by Scott as well. Scott, how are we? Yeah, yeah, good. Uh, it's unusual, isn't it, to have uh, already signed three players and it'd be nowhere near end at window. Yeah, it's a, a weird situation. It's been nice, actually, to be able to fill June with content as well. For anyone who's watched before, it's usually the month that Rovers are quiet in. And I'm joined by Newface as well. Sam, how are we? Are we good? Yep. Yeah. Oh, good. Thanks, mate. Like everyone else has said, uh, Greg's been true to his words. He said he wanted three in by the end of June and he's done that. So you can't knock him really after January, after the yeah. mess that was happened. I know. That was, I think, the main discussion we had as well going into the summer. Welcome to the channel as well, Sam. Uh, hopefully you. have you on a few videos going forward. So let's just get into it. We'll run through the squad. We'll have a look at what needs improving. So we'll start off with a goalkeeper position now. Mark, especially with the Kaminsky Page video we had earlier this year and the discussions keep going on. I'm not going to ask you if Rovers need a keeper. I'm going to ask you the question. Do you think both of them will be Rovers players come the deadline day on Friday the set? Is it Friday the 1st this time? Yeah, Friday the 1st of September. Do you think they're both going to be in a Rovers shirt still or do you think we'll have lost one of Kaminsky or Pears? I think Kaminsky is going to be gone. It sounds like there's a bit of noise coming around. I mean, we've discussed Luton and play teams like that. I think of of coming for him. I mean, it's sad to say because I think he's a fantastic keeper. But I I do think there's enough sniffing around there. Uh, we've been linked to a couple of other keepers as well. I know young lads, but still linked to new keepers. Um, and sad to say, I think Kaminsky could be out the door to raise some funds. Yeah, it feels that way, especially with the David Raya deal falling through. Man United seem to want other <clears> goalkeepers. <throat> Sam, I'll come to you on this one. If Kaminsky does go, or Pears, say one of them goes, do you think Rovers need a keeper? Is it better spending that money on you know other positions and promoting one of the young lads? It's funny. Before his injury, he was arguably the first name on the team sheet, wasn't it, Kaminsky? I mean, I remember that save against Borough he made early on in the season, and it was insane how he got there uh i've i've been a fan of kaminsky since since he signed and when pears came in you can tell by like his structure he's a bit sort of he's not as built he's not as maybe as confident in the air and every time he's played i've always felt a little bit shaky with him in goal so i think this is a key position i think they need to try and keep him for however long they can i think they'll both stay i think if Pears starts in there, the first game of the season, that will sort of tell us what the manager thinks is going to happen. Uh, and I think Kaminsky may, if that happens, he may go in January. But the 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 situation's not very good at the moment because, like I said, the injury came at the wrong time and Luton had been sniffing around. But it was such a nailed-on position for Kaminsky at the start of the season. And when Pears came in, he hasn't done anything wrong. But if you look at the statistics, we, we don't win as many games with him in that. So it is a worry. Yeah, I think it's that balance of, we know what he was before and we know he's a miles better keeper than he was back when them FA Cup mistakes were coming on, etc. It's just whether he can step up. Scott, I'll just come to you as well. So we mentioned Kaminsky Pears. We've got one saying one will go, one saying... The boss there. What camp are you in? What do you think is going to happen? Um, I think I uh, would have to agree with Mike, and I think he will go. Uh, I think Mike Mike nailed it on the head really when he said there's enough interest. Um, and why wouldn't there be? Like uh, like Sam said, he's a cracking keeper. Um, I think I was. I would have been a bit more worried about Ainsley Pears before he had that stint in, in the side. Um he did used to worry me, but um he's do you obviously you got... one pairs. Do you reckon he, do you reckon he one? I don't know, to be honest. I think it's I think it's a tough call to make. 
Um, I think he. I think. I think the one thing that Pers has over Kaminsky for me is playing the ball at his feet. I think he's he's better at that than Kaminsky has. Uh, I think you know distributing it out from the back, he's better at that as well. But it all depends on it on the on like Mike said, the money. You know, if, if we can if we can make a sizable profit on him, then I think we. I think even though it would be sad to see him go, I think you'd be you'd be daft to to not take a sizable profit and then reinvest it back into the squad. Well, this is it. the thing, isn't it? You know, it's like Sam said, his pairs are number one. I'd put him in the middle of the road of the championship, maybe slightly <clears throat> lower. Um, but I have a lot of faith in the defence to actually not need one of those top keepers right now. If we had money to burn, I'd say you, you say no to anything that's being bid for Kaminsky. He's your number one. Um, but the fact that we have zero in the budget, they're talking four million, I think, was mooted around for him. I'd... <laughs> I I would prefer Kaminsky in goal, but if you're going to tell me that we're going to get serious money, I'd be quite happy to run with pairs that's like a middle of the road championship because I do think that pairs could go either way. I mean, if he does well, he, he could really start to come to being a top keeper. But like Sam said, he did have some ropey moments. And if he starts to have a couple and his confidence goes down, then yeah, you could end up having a bit of a situation. Um, but to go back to the original thing that obviously Dan... You know, you said, I do think that, you know, the fact that we've been linked to keepers, I think, shows that I think Kaminsky may be out the door or at least one of them. And I don't believe in Hilton or Eastham um, at all. And we've already shown that if you have a keeper that gets injured, you need someone to come in for a period of time. So we do need to at least get a good backup. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think what one of the things that else, Mike, is Ainsley Percy is what five years younger than Kaminsky, so he's obviously mm. got that, that those five extra years to develop, and you know a lot can happen in five years, can't it? I mean, uh, you know, if if we can develop and keep developing like, at the rate that he has done since he joined, he, you never know how good he could get. Yeah. I think we're in that Travis situation as well, that would we be selling Travis if we had 4 million, 5 million side side? I don't think we would. I think selling these players, like Mike said, is because we need that money. It's because we want to go and buy a striker that's going to put 20 in the net for us, don't we? Yeah. Uh, we'll move on to the back four now. We'll start with right backs. Britain and JC has been debated all the time. We obviously covered left back before. I don't think there's any point covering left back because... We all know Rovers need a left back. We'd say a wedding expected to leave. So right back. We'll talk off the assumption JRC is not going to move because we look to be targeting midfielders now. And if you add one more midfielder to Travis Wharton, Garrett, uh, Buckley, and Tronstad, you've got six. I don't see it happening. So are you happy with the two right back options, Mike, of Britain and JRC? Is it? keep that as it is and move on. Again, money's going to play its factor in how many we actually add. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised we haven't been linked. I mean, we looked at a couple of lads, didn't we? But they seem to be quite young lads. And I think we discussed some of the under-21s look like they could come in and help out if need be. But no, I don't, I, I'm not concerned about right back at the moment. No, I think it's a position that if we get the money down the line, if certain things fall into place, I think we go for We'll move on to centre-back. Sam, I'll come to you now. Talk's been had about Rovers centre-back options. Uh, Dom Hyam, Hayden Carter, Scott Wharton and Ash Phillips, the four senior options. It's weird saying senior options with Ash Phillips involved, but, you know, his appearances last year. You add yeah. Sam Barnes into the mix, who I think is going to go out on loan. Do you think Rovers need another centre-back or is it, again, spend the money elsewhere and, you know, the striker positions one we're looking at? So... Is it spend money elsewhere or bring a centre back in? What do you think? I think spend money elsewhere. I think a lot of business was done in house during the season. We got quite a few players on new contracts, uh, quite decent contracts as well. I think Phillips will play more of a role this season. You've seen how much recently he's played for England, which is good. Uh, it's a good experience for him. Wharton's been in and out of the side, hasn't he? He was he was like favourable, and then. He didn't play against Burnley away. And I know 
everyone sort of just went, why on earth isn't he playing? And then he's been in and out the side. Keeping Hyam is the biggest thing. Keep Hyam, keep Carter fit. Phillips is going to play more games. I think we've got one of a really good, strong back, four centre-backs, really. Yeah, I agree. I think we're actually... It's again that old conundrum, is it? If we can get four players in, four more from the three we've already got, then you're happy to have a centre-back in that. But if you're going to be limited in three and two, I think you're worried. Scott, would you like to see anyone come in at centre-back or is it, like Sam said, uh, just keep it at the four and then obviously we've got Sam Bowens that we'd promote if we kept them. Uh, Pat Gamble's been training with the first team. So there's plenty of talent in behind Sam Bowens, but would you go and get a more senior option? Uh, no, I wouldn't. But that doesn't mean that I don't... I, I do wonder sometimes about, you know, is Scott Wharton actually good enough for this level? Because, like Sam said, he's in and out of the side. It's it's a case of why. Why why does his performance drop off after certain games? Why why is why is his performance is not as well when he comes on as a sub? Why is it? Why does he have the best games when he starts and rather than come on as a sub? It's like you've got to ask these questions and. Are you going to get better performances from the likes of Ash Phillips? Probably. So it's yeah. like you've got to question: Would you get better performances from the likes of Sam Barnes as well? Possibly. So it's you know I can I can fully see Scott dropping down further and further down the pecking order if he, if like you know he he doesn't start to show that this is where he wants to be and he wants to play at this level. I can see it dropping off. That's it, as well as the assets thing as well. <clears throat> to build Ash Phillips' value, you've got to keep playing him now and to keep him interested because them offers keep coming in for him. So, yeah, definitely a, definitely a position in my eyes I'd improve after the ones that we desperately need that are kind of been next on the chart. Michael, just come to you with a centre midfielder. So, like I mentioned, Travis Wharton, Garrett, Buckley and Tronstad will mention some addicts later. Do you think Rovers need another midfielder in that option in that calibre of players? And also, what role do you think Sandre Tronstad will actually have in that midfield? I think uh, I think he's been signed to replace Travis. Um, by the, by just the optics of it, play centre mid, loves to tackle, can get forward. Um, I believe he loves to tackle. It's um, it's it's, it's obviously there's not a hell of a lot we know about the lad. Um, I'm not concerned about sentiment. The only thing I'm concerned about is giving Adam Wharton the time he needs to to develop and getting him under, you know, you know, uh, getting more games under his belt. Um, I I don't think centre mid's a concern now. I think you've got players there that can easily play uh, multiple positions across that middle. I, I think it's fine. I can actually see us losing Travis, but not replacing. Um, him from what we've now got, I think that's where Strong's dad's come into. Is that a case of Jake Garrett and then taking that second row behind Tronstad in your eyes? Would that be the natural progression of him, you know, as a young player? Yeah, from the looks of it, I think it's going. I, I would like to see Wharton starting games. He just absolutely bossed it, looked great. Everyone's looking at him for a reason. Um, Obviously, Stronstad, we don't know much about him. He could come in and be an absolute flop. I hope he isn't. And it looks like he is a player. He's played good good level football, so you would have thought he's going to come in and do the job. Um, so my initial instincts is Stronstad with Wharton, uh, Garrett and Buckley um, being the two to back him up. And like we said about Schmodic, Schmodic can play further forward or, or coming back. So, and then Sigurdsson, you know, he, he's been listed as being able to play attacking mid. Is it somewhere he can play? So I think we've actually got plenty of talent there now. I'm not that concerned about it. No, I'm in the same boat. Sam, do you agree with Mike that you'd have Tronstad alongside Adam Wharton, who's looking like he'll be the key midfielder this year? Yeah, I think so. I don't think he's there to replace Travis. One of the things last season we didn't have was strength in depth. You look at teams that went up, and you hate to say it. When when we played at home later on, later on in the season against Burnley, we and Adam Wharton looked a proper player then. We absolutely bossed them. However, they brought on Benson and they win the game. And we don't have that. 
at the moment, do we? Last season, we, we you look to the bench. Sober Thomas did it in bursts, didn't really do enough. Uh, enough. Dolan doesn't do enough sometimes. So I think he's buying for strength and depth. I think he's buying, and his age is brilliant. He's 27, isn't he? So he's, he's a really good age for it. But I think he's buying to have strength and depth. And then he can look towards the bench and go, right, who can change a game? Who do we need to bring on to sit a game? There's been, there were so many times last season he went to five at the back and we lose. And you look at Sheffield, you know, in the, in the cup, we went five at the back and we lose. I think he's looking for that now. I, look, I think he's looking to buy a squad rather than a, a starting 11. But yeah, no, you, you'll play him Wharton, play him alongside Wharton and he'll do a job. When, no, I, when I, I say replace, agree. by the way, I don't mean replace him and Travis goes. I think Travis may go. I mean, in the starting lineup, I think um, I don't think Travis is going to play as many games next year. I won't be surprised if he's not even captain. No, I'm the same. I, I think, think I, I think I will take on the armband. I think we'll see pre-season, won't we? I, you, I think you'll be able to tell when we get into these later games. The thing I think, I think the thing is, though, I think I think we have brought in the likes of John Stad, you know, as depth. Um, you know, we wanted. We wanted that that centre mid with experience, and well, he certainly got that. Um, but it's it's also the fact of if Travis was to go now, if he if we, if we were to sell him for and get a few million for him, I don't think you'd be as bothered as you would if we hadn't have got John Stad in. I think you know getting that depth. You know, if we if we start the season and we've still got all the players that we've got now, then we're looking we're looking good, we're looking strong. But if we can, you know, still use that. I mean, I think when we're looking at some of these young centre mids, you know, from Premier League loans, I do wonder why. I sit there and I think, why are we doing that? We look strong enough. But if we are gonna lose a few, then maybe that's why maybe we're thinking ahead. Doesn't necessarily mean we will, but maybe it's just forward thinking from, from Rovers, which, you know, we're not used to seeing, but hopefully it's a it's a positive. Yeah, definitely. I completely agree. Moving on to uh, the attacking three and behind the striker. We're not too f- many in this position actually. Um, Arcande, Hedges, Dolan and Sigurdsson to four that can play across three plus Moritz actually. Michael, come to you, would you like to see anyone added to that or do you think, again, we might have to think of finance before anything else? I think we've got to think of finance and I'll get to that when we get to the centre forward position. Um, when I look at that, I think Dolan, great player, I hope he signs his contract. Hedges, I think, did really well for us last year. I think he can come on. Mark and Day, I think, is going to go, um, probably on loan somewhere. And Sigurdsson looks like he's going to be the replacement for, for Diaz. I would like to see another attacking player coming into that section. Um, there's talk of Niall Ennis being able to play across the wing, maybe. Um, but yeah, I would like to see someone else there, but it's not the priority position for me. No, I agree. Uh, we'll discuss the track in this section, actually. Sam, I'll come to you. Rovers brought Ennis in, as we mentioned, who I think is a promising signing. I'm not expecting him to be that out-and-out goal scorer that gets 20. No. Would you like to see another striker come into this section? Is that maybe the key priority now? <clears throat> That's the next signing. It has to be. You look across it, Gallagher scored eight goals last season and we won more games with him in the side because he brings more to his <laughs> goals but Diaz return was 14 and it that's that's where we we didn't go up it's because we didn't score enough goals it's it's got to be a priority uh there's there's players that have just come up from the league one that look really good and the problem is in the strike position you're going to have to spend a bit of money that's the, unless you go into the agent market or you or you sign a player you're not too sure about you've got to either go for it and sign a proven goal scorer in in English sort of the lower leagues, or you go and look and go off a chance. I mean, there was Ellis Sims who's been linked with Ipswich. He scored against us, didn't he, for Sunderland? He looks a decent player. Uh, but you've got to, I think you've got to go for it. 
I mean, there's one player I had a little look at and he will take a little bit of Bob to shift him, but Johnson Clark Harris from Peterborough just scores goals every season. He scored 31 goals season before, 27 this season. And you need someone with a little bit of character. I mean, you've got rid of Dak and you've got rid of Diaz and they were your flair players, weren't you? Someone with a bit of character. Now, Smonic seems to like, seems to look like he's got a bit, but I think Clark Harris would fit right in. And he's guaranteed to get your goals. Yeah, I think he could be a good shot as well as the Sammy Smodic link as well. But again, it's that money, isn't it? Come Rovers afford to take him out. We know what Peterborough like. He, you know, uh, Darren McAntony who's there, isn't it? He's a very stubborn man with his transfers. You see on Twitter, he's very open about it as well. It'll be interesting to see how it develops. Scott, i come to you with just the last bit. So we mentioned the front four that we've got. Is that striker the difference between Rovers making the playoff this season? Sam obviously mentioned it was last year, but do you think getting a number nine in could actually be the difference in us making that leap up next, uh, this season coming? I mean, it, it's one of them. It can be. I mean, look at. I mean, we said look at last year. You know, a single a single goal would have done it, and uh, you know, I think. You know, last year we only had Sam Gallagher. That, you know, he was our only striker. And, you know, as, like Sam said, we did win more games with him. But why? You know what I mean? There are other, there are other things that he, you know, that Sam brings. But, you know, when, when you want your strike, when you've got your striker on, and especially when he's six foot, four or whatever it is, you know, you want you want him to be, you know, getting some getting some heading heading some goals in. And I think he only managed to head three in last year last year. So from somebody who's six foot four and who's your striker, you know, you expect better. Um yeah. and I think that's it, you know, isn't it? It's the, me and Mike have been saying this like last year all last year near enough. <laughs> But, I'm going to mention the fan club. <laughs> no, I completely agree, actually. We do I, need I think, that difference. I, I think I saw something on Twitter uh, yesterday. Somebody was saying, like, you know, would would you sell Gallagher and say, like, he's an easy, he's an easy, like, two, three million. I don't think you'd get two, three million. No. I don't think anybody's going to pay two, three million for a striker who can't score 10 goals a season. No, I actually agree with you there. But that's where we'll round off on the discussion. Let us know down below your thoughts on all the positions. Uh, like Scotch mentioned with the striker position with Gallagher, what would you sell him for? Do Rovers need another centre-back, a keeper? Let us know about it all, everything we've discussed. Thank you to all three of you for coming on. Always a pleasure, Mike. Thanks for being on. Cheers, mate. And Scott? Yeah, always a pleasure. And last but not least, Sam, thank you for coming on for the first time. Hope to see you back soon as well. Yeah, hopefully the same. Cheers, lads, for having me. And thank you to all for all of you for watching. Remember to hit like, leave a comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. You know how it works. We've asked you enough. Go and do it all. There's still a large portion who watch and don't subscribe, so please do it. It takes 10 seconds. It really helps us out as well. But thank you for watching once again, and we'll see you soon for a new video.